Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an Indonesian comedy drama film called Too Handsome to Handle. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The Moss family has been good-looking for several generations. They are admired by many because of their beauty, which in turn makes them a lot of money. The eldest son, Okus, is an internet influencer. He has millions of followers because of his looks and is also considered a love guru who helps men impress their crushes. The father, Pakar, used to be a heartbreaker who dated more than 1,200 girls before meeting their mother. Meanwhile, the mother can also be considered handsome because of her masculine features and an obvious mustache. Lastly, the protagonist, Kulin, is the youngest son and the most attractive of them all. The family has gotten used to their life as people with good looks, except for Kulin, who struggles to live normally because of his handsomeness. He often wishes he was only mildly attractive. That way, he could go out without being chased by a crowd of women every time. Girls go crazy, pass out, pull their hair, and often get nosebleeds on getting a look at his attractive face. Poor, poor Kulin. As a result, he has never had a genuine interaction with a girl. He avoids going out in public as much as possible and has been homeschooled until now. Kulin has no friends he can talk to other than his pet fish. He often plays cards with it and talks to it out loud. His family watches him through a camera in worry. They want him to have a normal teenage life and try their best to help him. Okus frequently shows him pictures of girls trying to hook him up with someone. However, Kulin says that his type in girls is someone who doesn't like him. He wants to be seen for his personality and interest, not his face. Perhaps Kulin wants to date his fish. When nothing works out to motivate Kulin to go out, the family takes it a step further. They plan to fake financial problems and guilt him into going to school. One night, when Kulin wakes up to drink water, his parents pretend to be worried about their finances. They dramatically declare that they will only eat scrambled eggs for breakfast until they earn enough money for Kulin's homeschooling. He feels awful to be causing his parents so much trouble. The next morning, he declares that he will be going to school for the upcoming semester. The family is overjoyed until he mentions that he will only go to an all-boys school. Although they would have preferred him to be able to talk to girls, they are happy to take one step at a time. A few days later is Kulin's first day at an actual school. Okus drops him off on his bike, but Kulin doesn't take his helmet off. He plans to wear it the entire day to hide the fact that he is handsome. However, the plan backfires when the helmet grabs more attention than he intended it to. Kulin quietly sits down in the last seat, but is called out by the class bully, Sidi, and his minions. When the teacher enters the classroom, she too is surprised to see a guy with a helmet. She urges him to take it off right that instant. Although reluctant, Kulin has no way but to oblige. He slowly takes the helmet off in a dramatic way, revealing his face. That plan backfired hard. In the following scene, the teacher is being loaded into an ambulance. It turns out that she started to nosebleed and hyperventilate because of Kulin's beauty. The other kids complain to the principal that the new student is too handsome to handle. Kulin runs through the hallway to go back home, but is tripped by one of the bullies. They bring him to the school's storeroom and introduce themselves like they are Power Rangers. They are called the Tiga Talk, a group of three bullies led by Sidi, the principal's son. After the over-the-top introduction, they reveal that they need Kulin's help to ask a girl out for prom. The group has been in the senior year of school for the past three years. They refuse to graduate until Sidi goes to the prom with the most beautiful girl of the BBM school, Amanda. However, she only accepts requests from handsome men, so the group wants Kulin to deliver the promposal. They assign an innocent guy, Kibo, to help Kulin and lead the way. Kibo has also been a victim of their pranks in the past and is obliged to do whatever the bullies say. Afterward, Kulin goes to the principal's office with Kibo to make an official complaint about bullying in school. Kibo knows what the outcome will be, but he still accompanies Kulin. The principal is troubled by his son, refusing to graduate. Since Kulin's beauty gives him a chance to take Amanda to the prom, the principal wants them to do whatever the bullies say. That evening, Kulin and Kibo decide to complete the task the next day and get rid of the responsibility. Kibo is the first person who has shown kindness to Kulin, unrelated to his beauty. Although the day didn't go as planned, he is happy to have gained a friend. 
The next morning, they go to the BBM school, where the girls smell the presence of the boys. They are strict about not allowing ugly boys to enter the school premises. Hence, when they notice Coolin wearing a helmet, the entire school asks him to take it off. In a climactic scene, Coolin takes the helmet off, and mayhem ensues among the girls. Poor, poor Coolin. Only a few hours later, the news makes it to the television. Clips of girls crying, bleeding through their noses, getting possessed, and jumping around are being shared all around social media. Coolin starts being known as the too handsome to handle guy. The hottest student of the BBM school and model named Amanda also hears the news and is instantly smitten with Coolin. He is the first guy who matches in beauty and status with her. She immediately makes it her mission to impress him. When the news becomes huge, a crowd of girls gathers in front of the mass residence. The family starts charging them money for a house tour. Coolin, who is hiding in the streets, sees his family on the news. He feels betrayed and used by his own people. When they call him, he refuses to come home and feels even sadder when his pet fish is mishandled and killed by the tourists. He is now on the roof of a building hiding from the maniacs, chasing him in the streets. Suddenly, a girl appears behind him and inquires if he is going to jump off the roof. Coolin looks at her in shock because she doesn't bleed from her nose or pass out upon seeing him. The girl refuses to talk and simply walks away. Coolin is so nervous that he can hardly speak. The encounter makes his day a lot better. A while later, he calls Kibo, who picks him up and invites him to his home. He and his grandmother welcome Kulin to stay for as long as he wants. On walking into Kibo's room, he sees two rare collectible playing cards and is amazed by them. They realize that they share several common interests, and playing card collection is one of them. The following day, they visit the all-girls school to look for the girl from yesterday. While they are at it, they also meet Amanda and give her the files of the promposal sent by CD. Amanda pretends to be unimpressed by Kulin's beauty, but after he leaves, her nose bleeds profusely. Kulin sees his crush on the stairs, but the other girls surrounding him do not allow him to meet her. For the next few days, Kibo and Kulin do everything together and become best friends. One afternoon, Kibo takes Kulin to play futsal, where he frequently goes to meet his crush, Riri. After the match, Kulin notices the girl from the roof working at a shop nearby. He cannot help but stare at her. Just then, Kibo arrives and introduces Riri to him. Kulin discovers that she is also Kibo's crush, who he was talking about earlier. The two seem to be pretty close, which makes Kulin jealous. He can hardly fall asleep that night because the feeling is new and confusing to him. Then, he remembers Okus is a love guru and fixes a meeting with him. When they meet the following morning, Okus breaks down crying tears of happiness. He has been waiting for this day to give his brother advice on girls. Kulin has forgiven his family for selling him out to his fans because if that had not happened, he would never have met Riri. The brothers then go shopping for groceries while Okus lists out the points of things Kulin should do to impress his crush. As Kulin follows Okus's suggestions, he registers he is far from knowing Riri like Kibo knows her, but he still doesn't want to give up on his first love. One afternoon, Amanda comes to the boys' school and hands Kulin an invitation for her birthday. Alongside it, she also gives him a phone as a gift. Later that day, Kibo, Kulin, and Riri go to karaoke. Eventually, Riri and Kulin get to sing together. While Kulin is excited to duet with her, Riri only focuses on Kibo. He soon registers that she also likes Kibo back. The revelation makes his heart crumple in jealousy. So, when Kibo is not around, he bluntly asks her if she has a crush on him. Initially, Riri denies it, but when Kulin lies about Kibo being in love with Amanda, her face drops. Her expression is enough to confirm his suspicions. After returning home, Kulin calls Amanda and asks her for a favor. She happily agrees to do anything he says. The next day, several people gather at the venue to celebrate her birthday. When Kulin and Kibo arrive, Amanda welcomes them. Strangely enough, she seems to be more interested in Kibo than in Kulin. She even pulls him aside to talk to him in private. At the same time, Riri arrives at the party and sees Amanda kissing Kibo. Heartbroken, she runs outside. Taking advantage of her vulnerability, Kulin confesses his feelings for her. Riri thanks him but claims that she never saw him as someone more than a friend. Even after conspiring against his only best friend, Kulin gets nothing in return. The group of bullies also see Amanda kissing Kibo and are enraged with jealousy and anger. They beat Kibo up for it while Kulin watches from nearby, too scared to interfere. 
Later, he brings Kibo home and dresses his wounds alongside his grandmother. Only after seeing him moan in pain does Kulin realize that he has made a huge mistake. The next day, Kibo gives him a legendary card from his card collection that Kulin had been wanting for a long time. Guilt-ridden, Kulin confesses to everything wrong he has done until now. Kibo is shocked and hurt by the betrayal. He claims that he would have left Riri if he knew Kulin liked her too. The words do nothing but hurt Kulin even more. At last, Kibo orders him to get out of the house immediately. Knowing that he is in the wrong, Kulin simply leaves. He finally returns home after a month. His family is overjoyed, but the same cannot be said for Kulin. He locks himself in his room and doesn't talk to anyone. But most of all, he misses his best friend. The two bump into each other at times, but never share anything more than a glance. At home, Kulin's mother is worried about his well-being. She approaches him one night and gives him his pet fish that never died. She also tells him that he can go back to being homeschooled if that is what he prefers. The family only wants his happiness and is ready to do anything for it. Kulin, touched by her words, realizes that he has people in his life who are rooting for his success. This motivates him to make things right between him and Kibo. The next morning, he runs to Riri and tells her everything. Following that, he goes to Kibo and tries to apologize. Although Kibo dismisses him at first, when asked about Riri, he starts to describe how much he loves her. Kulin shows him that Riri was listening to him on the phone the entire time. That way, he mends their relationship and goes back to being both of their friend. A few days later, they all go to prom together. Kibo's date is Riri, while Kulin's date is Amanda. Whatever happened to that bully, CD? <laughs> Who cares? As expected, Kulin and Amanda win the title of prom king and queen. Kulin hears a girl comment that he is only mildly handsome and is instantly drawn to her, indicating the start of a new relationship. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.